Today's video was requested by Matthew. He wanted to know more about J.A. Cop's baby's friend, which killed many babies. Shockingly, it was actually still being sold after people knew of its dangers. The manufacturer was an interesting character as well. So let's get into it on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. <music> Today's story is about Charles Robert Kopp. He was born in 1865 in Pennsylvania. In almost everything that I found, he went by C. Robert Kopp. His dad was named Simon and his mom was named Julia. Simon died when Charles was seven. So C. Robert went to college at Philadelphia School of Pharmacy, but due to his ill health, he had to drop out after one year. Apparently, at some point, he was granted a certificate by the Philadelphia Pharmaceutical Board. So, for six years, he ran a drugstore at the corner of Penn and Market Street. It was during this time that he experimented, and it said, perfected, the baby's friend formula. He called it J.A. Cop's baby's friend, which is named after his mom, Julia. As far as I can tell, his mom had nothing to do with the formula, it's possible she may have suggested something to go in it, but she wasn't a chemist, and as far as I can tell, she never worked with him at the drugstore. None of the census records lead me to believe that she ever worked. Eight years after his dad died, we see C. Robert living with possibly a relative. The head of the household here runs a grocery store, and 17-year-old C. Robert is a clerk at that store. His mom and sister are living with another relative. In 1881, he's a drug clerk, and in 1884, we see the first advertisement in the newspaper for him. He's just selling various drugs at his drugstore. In 1885, he's listed as a druggist. In 1884, he married Annie May. In 1887, this says that C. Robert presented his wife with a new piano. I also saw quite a few real estate ads from him in the paper throughout the years. This one's the earliest that I saw. He's 23 here, so he's got quite the work ethic. He's already running a drugstore and working real estate deals. Here's another ad of things he's selling. And here's 1889, an auctioneer sold a lot belonging to C. Robert Cop to an Edwin Locks. Now, how does he own so much property at such a young age? I wonder if his dad maybe owned some of these. Around 1889, he moved to Asheville, North Carolina, and he was there for a little while. This says, C. Robert Cop is in a new city and reports that trade is booming here. Around 1891, he moved to Baltimore, as this newspaper states. A real estate broker yesterday sold the fine building belonging to C. Robert Cop of Baltimore, Maryland. In 1892, his wife died. They had only been married for five years and she was only 25. So Cop is 27 and already widowed. It was about this time that he made his way back to York, Pennsylvania. He opened his patent medicine factory. Here's 1894. We see his factory here at 19 East Market in Pine, which is this intersection. In 1896, his mom, Julia, died. It says that she had been living with C. Robert and she fell down the stairs about 10 days ago. It never mentions her having anything to do with the baby's friend. Here's April, 1899. It says, Mr. C. Robert Cop is having plans drawn preparatory to the erection of a laboratory on the south side of East Poplar between Pine and Edgar. In 1900, he's listed here as a druggist. He's 37 now. This census says that he's married to his second wife, Emma, for seven years now, and they have two more children. His son, Charles, from his first marriage is 12 now. We see here in September 1900, he's building four three-story apartment buildings adjacent to his laboratory. Here's 1905, a wanted ad. Four or five girls to work in the laboratory, also a boy, 15 or 16 years old, to work in the packing room. December 1905. Here's the first time that I start seeing warnings about Cop's baby's friend. It was regarding a three-month-old baby named George Franklin, who, it was determined, died as a result of Cop's baby's friend. The jury warns the public not to use Cop's baby's friend. About a month later, January 1906, William Lancaster, another infant, died within 48 hours of taking the medicine, and his father sued the druggist, 
who negligently and carelessly sold him the medicine. Apparently this was happening a lot. In January 1906, an article was written in the Associated News reporting cases of opium poisoning from the use of Cop's baby's friend. It says, apparently it is the practice of these people to watch out for birth announcements in the paper and then send them free samples of the medicine. It ends by saying, I hope the proper authorities will put a stop to the infamous use of the United States mail. We all know that 1906 is the year the FDA started cracking down on patent medicines and their obnoxious use of narcotics in the remedies. In 1907, this article is talking about how the new regulations make medicines warn customers of the harmful effects in their products. And it mentions here that so-called soothing syrups, such as Cop's Baby's Friend, which has killed a large number of infants in various parts of the country, must now show on the label the warning of morphine. It says you'll also notice that the deceptive label, Warranted Harmless, no longer appears. In 1908, the cops are planning on adopting a daughter. It says there was a fire recently making a few children orphans, and it names a few families planning on taking in some of these orphans. This 1908 article is speaking of different properties that Cop owns. In 1909, Cop's baby's friend is still being sold. 1910, here's the household. Cop is in his 40s now. I see some boys here in the house, but I don't see any adopted daughter. So I wonder what happened. Still in 1910, an article warns parents again. The headline reads, Soothing syrups make dope fiends out of babies. There's been a blacklist of dangerous cures made for the public to be aware. So here's some of the list, listing the name of the medicine and the dangerous ingredients they contain. And COPS is listed in here twice, noting that the dangerous ingredient is morphine in this one. Still in 1910, COP is renting a nine-room house for $18 a month. September 1911. It seems COP is under fire again. The United States Department of Agriculture has filed a suit against COP in violation of the Food and Drug Act. The COP's baby's friend is misbranded. It claims this preparation is a valuable remedy for wind colic, griping in the bowels, diarrhea, and teething troubles. And after analysis of the product, it contained alcohol by volume 8.05%, invert sugar 6.44%, sucrose 29.76%, ash 0.005%, and morphine sulfate about one ninth grain to the fluid ounce. This combination of ingredients does not possess therapeutic properties adequate to obtain the results it claims, therefore is false and misleading. By the way, look at the dosage. One week olds get four drops. One month olds get 10 to 12 drops. 12 month olds get a full teaspoon. That is crazy. This 1911 newspaper mentions that the company was incorporated April 29th, 1871. In 1912, we are still trucking along with a testimonial from Dr. Rothrock and how he used Cop's baby's friend with excellent results. So it looks like we're trying to salvage the product's reputation. And here's another one. And here's another 1913 ad with another doctor recommendation for the product. But in 1915, a large consignment of Cop's baby's friend was seized by U.S. pure food inspectors. And again, it was in violation of the pure food and drug law. There's a court date on May 18th. On May 19th, the headline reads, C. Robert Cop is arrested with a girl in Baltimore. It says that a 17-year-old Ruth Sailor is a servant in his home and they drove to Baltimore. They were arrested. She's being held as a minor without proper guardianship and he's locked in a cell overnight. Turns out Cop's wife tracked him and the girl there. It doesn't mention that he was supposed to be in court that day that he took off. I guess nothing really happened with that because the next time I see them is in October and it just talks about how busy real estate is this time of year. In 1916, apparently the cop home was struck by lightning, causing a fire that was quickly put out by the neighbors. In 1920, this census shows cop has remarried. And guess who his new wife is? Ruth, that 17-year-old he ran off with. She's now 22. He's 56. Cop's sons are all in their 20s. How weird is it that his wife is the same age as his kids? Anyway, two of his sons are working with him now. 
January 1921, Constance Roberta Kopp, their five-month-old daughter, died Tuesday afternoon. Aww. Still in 1921, we are still in business, and he's still moving real estate. In 1923, another wanted ad. In 1925, here's a letterhead, complete with C. Robert Kopp's signature at the bottom. 1925, another warning article comes out about the dangers of this medicine. It seems the happy couple had another daughter because in 1928, Norma Kopp, a four-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kopp, swallowed a nickel and it was lodged in her esophagus and she was rushed to the hospital and the coin was removed. She was okay. In September 1928, the Kopp's baby's friend company is being sold at a public sale. Now, I don't understand legalese, so I don't know if the property was seized or what's actually going on here. The following year, he's still listed as a chemist in the directory. In 1929, Trouble in Paradise, Miss Ruth, wife of Robert Kopp, attempted to take her life by ODing on various drugs. She was treated at the hospital and it says Robert is in Baltimore. This was a result of an argument. In 1929, Mr. Campbell, head of Food and Drug Administration, declared he had no apologies and will continue to be active. He cites this as an extremely dangerous preparation. The following year, Cop is still listed as a pharmacist. His wife Ruth is still listed here, along with their three children together, one son and two daughters. He's 66 now. Later in the year, in August, they welcomed another daughter. Two months after his brand new daughter, Cop is arrested. His wife accused him of assault and battery, which was the result of another fight. In 1932, it looks like Cop is still hustling out there. He's looking for mobile salesmen to sell his products. In 1933, there's another call to get this medicine off the shelves. In November that year, he's back in jail for disorderly conduct. Norma, his daughter, was absent from school for several days. And when someone went to go check out the situation, Cop refused to answer any questions about his daughter. So he was taken in, found guilty of disorderly conduct, fined, and then he was sent back home after several hours. So I'm surprised to see in 1934 that there are still ads out there for this. This is the last one that I see though. Here's 1936. C. Robert Cop is held on charge of passing bad checks. My goodness, this guy. He's 71 now, by the way. Still, in 1936, another sheriff's sale of some of Cop's property. December 1937, Cop has a heart attack. He died about two weeks later. He was 74. It says that he was actually residing at the YMCA when he died. Does that mean he's not living with Ruth? Does that mean he's broke? So, back in 1906, Cop had a mansion built. And when he moved out, it was converted to Crandall Health School. It says that back in 1921, Dr. Crandall moved into the mansion and founded a health institute there. Apparently, Dr. Crandall did a 60-day jail sentence for unlawfully practicing medicine, and he was fined $1,000. His practice was closed down in 1927. In 1949, the building burned down. For several years, I found these in memoriam of C. Robert Kopp. I don't know if it was every year, but I saw a lot of them through the 40s, 50s, and the 60s. His wife, Ruth, died in 1967 at the age of 69. I think the Kopp's baby's friend died with C. Robert Kopp. So, to date these bottles, apparently in 1885 was whenever he sold his first bottle. And although I think it was a trickle when he died, if that, I'm going to say that the last bottles could have been as late as 1937 when he died. I'm not aware of any of his sons continuing the business because I never found anything else in the papers after he died. So that is going to do it for today's story. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.